Hey everybody, before we get into today's episode, uh, we are interviewing Allison Terpstra, the head of the missions team at NCC. This is going to be a two-part interview. We sat down with her for almost a full hour, so we're going to split this up into two sections. You'll hear the first half this week, and then tune in till next week for the second half. Hope you enjoy the show. We're breaking free from the traditional sermon format to engage in raw conversations about faith, life, and everything in between. So join us as we unplug from the noise of everyday life and plug into something more. This is NCC Unplugged. Conversations, community, and culture. Welcome back. This is episode four. My name is Jeff Terpstra. I'm the preaching minister here at Norwin Christian Church. I have Matt Mastriani joining me here. Hello. And as well, our first special guest on our podcast is our missions team leader, Allison Terpstra. Hi. <laughs> I'm excited for her leadership in the missions team. And as we go through the episode today, we'll talk about m missions and what missions means here at NCC, how we do missions, uh, how we approach missions, and all of that. So, Allison, why don't you give us a brief introduction to ministry team, how you got involved, uh, all that. So, we have a lot of ministries here at NCC. One of them is the missions ministry. And what the missions ministry is, is a group of people that help to glorify God by creating and cultivating healthy relationships between the church, the people in the church, and various missions that we support locally and globally. I got involved in missions, I mean, it's been like a long process since high school, I think, when I went on an official mission trip, but it's just always grown, and I think the Lord has placed it in my heart and put people around me that, has, that have had conversations about it. Um, so here at NCC, we had a lovely couple that uh, spearheaded the missions team for a very long time. We're ready to kind of start doing other things in their lives. And so with the staff, uh, they prayed and they asked me to lead it up. And I was excited to say yes, kind of nervous at the same time. Um, but we have a great team. Those two people are still on the team. And I really value their experience. So how long have you been leading it now? I think about three years. When you went on your uh, first mission trip, where'd you go, and were you nervous at all or anything? I So we went to, if we want to talk about like an official, what we think of as a mission trip out of the country, it was to the Dominican Republic. Oh, okay. And I was nervous in a sense that like I didn't know what to expect, but I was excited because I was heavily involved in the church youth group, and I was like, this is just another thing we do, and let's do it, something different. And to be honest with you, I did not like it. No. Yeah. And the next year I was like, nah, it's not for me. I'm not going to go <laughs> until somebody else dropped out. My youth minister's like, you need to fill this space and just come with us. And then it grew from there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Look at you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little bit about the missions team. What what does the missions team do? Like you said, it's another ministry of the church. You're probably, um, I'd say, largest in some respects in that. You guys have a big budget to do missions work. Um, I know they meet regularly. What What's the purpose of the team? What do you guys do? What is your focus? We have um, multiple purposes, but the main one is to keep the congregation connected with the missions that we support. So the elders here at NCC decided that 15% of the general budget is going to go towards missions. This was decided a long time ago. And that's a large chunk of the budget. So a team was created to kind of manage those funds, pray over them. And so part of our job, our tasks are to just literally hand out the money to the appropriate missions, um, make sure that they go out on time, make sure that the missions know the money's coming. Um, part of that too is to hold these missions uh, accountable. Um, so we create close relationships with them, hoping to better understand what they're doing not just to keep them accountable, but to encourage them because it can be very lonely to be out on the mission field. So a lot of times we have monthly meetings. We'll get together. We'll talk about finances. We'll talk about uh, needs that have popped up. And we will pray over maybe some prayer requests that have come in from the missions or the missionaries. Um, we also try and encourage 
the, the congregation to have relationships with the missions and the missionaries. So we may do that by having missions come in and have a table in the lobby or speak during service. We also have an event called Missions Weekend where many people have probably already participated where we'll do meal packing and we have representatives from different missions. Um, and then one of the other major things we do is we plan a yearly trip. So the I don't want to say the problem with missions, but one of the issues is that missions and outreach can kind of become uh, convoluted and mixed up. And different churches have different definitions for this. Here at our church, we have a minister, Garrett, who is in charge of outreach. So he may do like day-to-day things of going down to McKeesport and supporting one of our missions there. Um, but we are more along the lines of we make sure the monthly support goes out and then we'll plan a week-long type trip. Yeah, so going back to keeping missions on the forefront of the minds of those in the congregation, you talked about having missionaries come into service to talk about their ministry. Um, And a lot of times a missionary that we support will reach out to you and say they'll be in the States for a month, two months on furlough. Uh, We don't call it vacation for them because a lot of times they're coming back to either raise more support, uh, get a break, uh, see some family that they don't typically see. And it's during that furlough that we'll be able to schedule them to come in and speak on a Sunday or have a booth out in the lobby, something like that. And I think we always appreciate uh, getting those check-ins and just being able to hear the heart of the uh, missionary. Oh, for sure. And I think, and I've read this, and been a part of it. I think when a church has an active missions team committee, whatever they may call it, um, it supports the other ministries in the church. Mm -hmm. So when missions is supported and encouraged and brought to the forefront of the people's minds, it allows children's ministry, um, the preaching ministry, the tech ministry, all these other ministries to be able to do their job well and to be encouraged along the way. So when the missions team supports a certain missionary in the field, um, what, what is the process to support somebody like that? What, is, what, what does the team think through, pray through, as they think of a missionary to support? Mm-hmm. So we support around 15 different missions or missionaries. A lot of them we have a history with, so they have been selected or chosen or come into the group just from – in the past with past relationships. And as they continue to grow, of course, we can continue to keep relationships with them. Um, That's how a lot of them came to be. The missions team has had different direction over the years as far as like, okay, we want to support missions in this particular part of the world, or we want to start support missions that focus more on evangelism. Um, At this point, we're not looking for new missions, so we don't really evaluate them on those factors. We don't want to focus on what they're doing, but kind of the attitude that they have. Are they doing it um, for God? Obviously, I think a lot of missions would say yes, but we want to make sure that they're doing it in an ethical way and that they're supporting themselves and taking care of their families as well. Now, on the other hand, we also like to have a variety of missions because I think a variety of missions can reach out to different people in the congregation. So we have uh, ones that we would consider mercy or compassion ministries where they may provide safe homes for girls um, that have been trafficked or we have some that are doing um, bible translation or they're making videos of the literal gospel to share around the world Uh, so we have a wide variety which i think is beneficial to where our church is at the moment i think like you said some missions will uh impact some that have a heart in that direction and others uh, will for others in the church. And so that's why we support uh, many different ones. Talk about some of the ones that we support locally, because we do support missions that are other side of the world, Mm -hmm. but we also support some that quote unquote, maybe are in our backyard. Mm -hmm. So we have one in McKeesport, which is the town that's just like 30 minutes down the road. Um, They were known as Sunshine Ministries. Now they're called the Dream Center. And they do a wide variety of things in in 
that town, they um, provide food, they provide tutoring, they provide a safe place for the kids to come after school. During the summer, they have a whole program for them. They provide a safe home for some women. Um, and they also go into Pittsburgh and do street ministry and uh, work with the homeless population there. So, Allison, you said um, currently we support about 15 mm -hmm. different missions. Do you get bombarded with requests from lots of missions to support throughout the month? or, or That's a good question. Kind of vet them. Um, it comes and goes. So there'll be times where I do have a lot of requests, and it, I, I, you know, you don't want to say no to everybody. Right. But at the same time, you want to, you know, what you're capable of and what God has asked you to do. And I think in order for us to serve the missions that we currently serve, we have to do it in a healthy way and create boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, so month to month, there's not like, a t I'm not bombarded okay. by any means. Um, but I do hear personal stories from people in the congregation, and I'm happy to have those conversations and pray alongside them and say maybe in the future. Or uh, a lot of times the team likes to discuss one-time gifts. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we're not ready to take them on as month to month, they'll certainly consider one time. Great. And outside of the 15% budget that is set aside, um, are there ever any special offerings or is there opportunity for the congregation to kind of contribute more to that? How does that, mm -hmm. how does that work? I, envelopes, like the actual offering envelopes. There's a section for missions. Oh, okay. So if people were to like check that box, that then their offering would go directly to missions. And then the missions team would kind of send it out to whoever needs it in that month. Um, as well as online, there's a drop-down box just for missions. And so both those gifts, either through the envelope or online, if designated for missions, 100% of that goes to missions. Mm -hmm. But then 15% of the general fund right. is designated for missions. Right. And then in Christmas, uh, the past several years, the Christmas Eve offering has gone directly to one of the missions that we support. So that's kind of like above and beyond what is normally coming out of the budget. Mm -hmm. So then the flip side, uh, missions is a big supporter of individuals here at the church. Uh, there's been people that have gone on missions themselves after they've seen something, heard something, uh, maybe attending with a different group, but they attend our church, and so they've looked for support. Um, you have a mission trip coming up to Arizona this summer. Um, what... What does that support look like from the missions team to those individuals? And if someone is in that boat, how do they get connected to you to ask for support from the missions team or to partner with you guys going forward? Mm -hmm. So in our budget, and we have set some guidelines up as to what we would do in that scenario. So for an NCC-led and planned trip, um, members of NCC or non-members of NCC would get support and that would just be tied up in the trip information. We would just give that out. Um, then if somebody were to come from maybe a, a member here at NCC, but is like going on a trip, we had this happen recently. They went on a trip to the Dominican Republic with another church. Mm. Um, so what she did is she came in and gave a brief presentation. Um, she talked about where they're going, what they're doing, how much the trip was, and stuff like that. And so we were able to give her um, some money towards her trip. That's great. Mm -hmm. So before we shift to global missions, because I think that's a good example, here's our one of our church members going on a mission trip within another church, which we want to support because it's not just about Norwin Christian Church. It's about God's kingdom. And if someone can advance God's kingdom through a trip with another church, we still want to be involved with that. We still want to be supportive of that. Um, so we'll look to, to missions in God's kingdom. But before we move there, is there anything else from a practical standpoint about missions here at NCC and the way we do it? I think um, that we are really blessed. Personally, I have been very encouraged by the attitude of NCC by the missions committee team, they set this wonderful foundation and has put missions on the forefront of everybody's minds. Um, you don't find that everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just want to say I'm thankful for that. I guess one more question before we go on. 
<clears throat> so 15% is given from the general fund to missions plus other designated gifts. What's the, which changes from year to year, depending on mm-hmm. giving and all of that. What's the general ballpark number for that fund that goes towards missions? So yearly, it's around 200000 That's great. I know. That's, that's great. I know a lot of ministries are blessed by that. And so thank you for, to the missions team mm-hmm. and your discernment and giving that to the missions and uh, the needs that are out there. So, um, so looking, looking global and a little bit bigger than just NCC, when we think missions, um, what is missions on a global scale beyond NCC um, when we talk about that? How do, you, how do you define that? How do you see that? Um, such an easy question to ask, but not an easy question to answer. So, and I want to say this too. I think a lot of times people hear missions and think evangelism and think, well, I'm not going to be going door to door, knocking on people's doors, telling them about Jesus, which nothing's wrong with that. That's fine. If you want to do that. Um, when we hear missions, we think the great commission, we think of, you know, Jesus getting ready to ascend into heaven and, telling his followers, like, go out and baptize these people in my name. And um, I knew, you know, growing up in the church, I was like, that's great, but that terrifies me. Um, And as I got older, I learned that missions can look differently. Mm -hmm. So, one, even if I was terrified, I think God would have strengthened me in that if he was asking me to do evangelism on a more traditional level. Um, But I think missions can also look like Orphan care, it can look more like compassion ministries or mercy ministries. Um, We support missions that, for example, we have one in El Salvador that works with a population of men that are addicted to drugs or alcohol. And are are they evangelizing? Essentially, yes, but it doesn't look like that, like, off the bat, I Mm -hmm. think. Um, But we see examples in Scripture of, in the early church where they were giving everything to support each other so that um, they just had grace upon grace upon grace. And even in um, Exodus, I just learned about this story where God gave uh, this one particular guy gifts of craftsmanship so that he can Mm -hmm. help build the tabernacle. And I think that is missions. We see that with, um, I don't want to boil it down to being like, well, when you use the gifts God has given you, that's missions. But it really could be missions. I think um, traditionally it's been more of like, let's go feed these starving starving people. Let's go translate the Bible and things of that nature. I think a lot of times, too, kind of going off of what you were saying was people envision missions as like, going out and like preaching and teaching Mm -hmm. like that's that's all it is but yeah like you just said there's so many more little things that even we can be doing we don't need to go across the the world to serve yeah and that traditional mindset makes it easier for me not to do that Mm -hmm. because i can say well god's equipped john over there or god's equipped sally over there to do that and so i can just send some money or i could just pray, which both of those are great to do. Um, But if I'm doing that and I'm not seeing what we're also calling missions down the street or missions by taking care of someone that just went to the nursing home, um, we're escaping the reality of what God wants us to do. And like that verse in James and so many others, uh, when we look to the Old Testament, the nation of Israel and Judah became unfaithful and a lot of God's uh, disappointment, a lot of God's frustration with his own people was because they were not taking care of those widows. They were not taking care of of those and being unrighteous and doing those. And so we're kind of taking maybe a bit of a broader definition of missions uh, throughout the years, that missions can look different, and we give our permission ourselves permission to see missions in that light, not just the traditional we're going to go to this country and do this for a set amount of time, uh, which, again, that's great. That needs to happen. Um, 
but to broaden it and say it might look a little bit different and might might be some unconventional gifts that God has given us uh, in a demonstration of who he is to give him glory and we still call that missions work because it's important and it strengthens God's kingdom certainly I think too in the past we've had this idea of missions or missionaries as like the penultimate Christian Mm -hmm. where if like, okay, I decided to follow Jesus and I read my Bible and doing all these things. What's the next natural step? If I want to be really on fire, I I need to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, But I think missions is more than like this goal that we strive for. It's what you were saying. It's in the day to day. It's missions within our community and it's, Missions is just furthering the kingdom of God, and that can be something small or something big. Now, something that the missions ministry team here does is we like to embolden the congregation to maybe take a step out in faith. Um, We like to strengthen their faith and put them in a position where we need to rely on God. And missions, in a more traditional sense, as like going on a trip, is an excellent space for that. But we don't want to do that at the risk of harming the population or the people that we are going to serve. All right. I think that's a good place to end this week's episode. That's what we call a cliffhanger. So we hope you enjoyed part one. Be sure to tune in next week for part two of the interview with the mission team leader, Allison Terpstra, as we dive into further how sometimes uh, wanting to help in certain areas with missions can actually be a hindrance. And that's something you don't really think about, but we dive into that with Allison in the interview. Until next week, we hope you have a great one. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 